party people. How you guys doing? You all right? Good to see you, masked up. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Alvin, uh, Coach AG, is doing well. Spoke to him earlier. He's in good spirits. And uh, he FaceTimed with the team out on the court. So that was a, that was a big bonus. I thought that added some, some wind to the guy's sales. Uh, Marvin, TD, out in health and safety protocols, as you guys well know. Um, also, Rashawn is uh, still working with the eye in, in day to day. Um, nice. Nice. First, first, first presser. I, I like it. I like it. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we will be recalling Lou King and Jemias Ramsey. And tonight, um, Davion will be in the starting lineup. So we're going to go with Fox, Halliburton, Davion, HB, and Alex Lynn. So, um, and I, I think more than anything, you guys, we talked to, to the guys beforehand and uh, the biggest thing is, is not about me. This isn't about anybody. It's, it's more about us. It's about the opportunity that has been presented for our team to face adversity and see if we can fight through it. We know the things that we can do. Now we just got to go out and execute at a high level. So that's what I expect from them tonight. And I know Kings fans expect a, a, as much as well and hope that we put on a great performance that you guys will be proud of. Doug, can you walk us through kind of finding out about Alvin and then subsequently uh, Marvin and TD and kind of how that happened and the team found out and then also kind of you being in that chair and how you approach this? Um, well, my phone rings and, <laughs> and it just kind of happens bang, bang, bang. I mean, more than anything, uh, I learned about AG first and foremost, uh, got to come test and, and all of that. Then... Right after that comes Marvin, and then I kind of heard about TD, but wasn't quite sure. Um, once I got the phone call that that I would be leading the troops tonight, it, it was it was more of a all hands on deck. I mean, we got a great staff: uh, Longo, Rico, um, Stacy, Lindsey, uh, Jonah. Uh, every single person that's on our staff is going to be helping. I, I'm I'm right now the interim interim head coach for the evening but this is this is about us as a unit it, and ultimately I always say that you get what you what you need not what you want and we've said and AG has said many times that how we get out of these situations is the people that's in the room and it's no more greater opportunity because it's just the people in the room and we have to make it work so it's just about everybody tonight I uh, have to ask you Coach Christie, now, have you been in the situation? Have you did any coaching? Does it have to be the head coaching position? And um, how do you feel about this whole situation? Um, I mean, I'm excited for our team more than anything. But for me, like, uh, since I got back to Sacramento, anything and everything that I've been asked to do, I just try to do it with my heart and soul and do it with the best of my ability. And this this one is, is no different. Um, I've been in basketball my whole life. Um, yes, yeah, sitting in that seat, uh, three seats over it, or one seat over is going to be different, no, no doubt. But um, that's where we rely on each other. And that's what I'm going to do tonight is we got offensive and defensive people. I'm a little bit of all of that. And um, more than anything, it's going to be about the players coming to play at a really high level for 48 minutes. And it's nothing that you guys haven't heard before, whether it was me in this chair or anybody else. But that's what's going to be expected tonight. Doug, uh, just when you look at the opportunity for yourself, just how much do you need to take this in as another step in your progress uh, if, you, if you have aspirations to be a head coach down the line? I mean, you, you don't know what you don't know until, until you get into a situation, you figure it out. I mean, there was, as a, as a coach, it was, there was my first practice and then the first time that, you know, the clipboard was thrown in my hands and the first time. So it, it's always that. But for me, um, like I say, it's, this isn't a, about me. I understand that it's part of the journey and part of what I'm doing. But as you guys know, I, I'm, a, I'm a team player. The way I played the game, the way I go about my life, um, every aspect of it. So this is, this is no different. This is just part of the journey. I'm going to not take it in because it happens so fast. I'll look back on it, I'm sure. Um, but 
the guys have been great, and more than anything, um, just want to take it in a little bit, and hopefully everybody comes and does what they need to do. Doug, when you look at some of the defensive issues since that Orlando game that you guys won, how much of it is the communication on defense more than anything? <sighs> That's a good one. Um, communication is everything on defense because it's – it's how it's body language. It's talking with your mouth. It's it's the 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 physical touching of the opponent. It's it's all of those things. And for whatever reason, and listen, in in NBA games, you got nobody's perfect. Like that's not it. It's just with the level of consistency that we need to be able to do it. And I I expect out of the, out of them. Um, on a night to night basis. And it hasn't been there as consistently as we would like it, but the level of physicality and the level of communication needs to be at a higher level. You're definitely correct. And then with Davion in the starting lineup, was a thought there to go smaller three yard lineup and maybe set the tone defensively from the jump? Uh, well, he obviously does that. But if you look at um, if you look at Washington and they place three, three guards, so if there was any time that we can put the three guards out there. This is a the prime opportunity. Um, but you know what you're going to get from him. And he sets the tone, and um, I would expect nothing different from him this evening. Doug, uh, was there ever a moment in your mind that you thought this could be a possibility? I know your preparation is you know, pretty well documented at this point as a player and analyst and all that. But did you ever have to prepare for a moment like this to be able to take the reins? Um, it, listen, it, it, all those things always kind of go through your head. Um, you guys know me. Um, I want to be the best at whatever I do. So if that is the assistant coach, I, I'm that. Whatever m my opportunity is, that presents itself, I'm going to try to do my best. So from that standpoint, like, you, you think of all these things. Um, as a kid, it's no different than being on the playground and thinking, you know, I'm Magic Johnson, three, two, one, you know. Um, I've told you guys many times I have unfinished business here in, in a way that um, is hard to explain. But I, I'm here, and uh, we'll see what happens. Doug, in talking to your team during your walkthrough here, how do you address this in terms of trying not to make it or minimize it as a distraction? Or is that even possible? It's a good question, G-Man. I, I posed it to them as an opportunity. Because that's what that's what I see. I see this as an opportunity uh, for us to get off the snide, to come to come home and play in front of our home fans, and give them the product that they so desperately deserve. So I, I, I don't look at it that way, and I didn't pose it to them that way. So it was more posed in a positive as this is an opportunity. Let's grasp it. Uh, Doug, we know that uh, TD uh, recovered from COVID-19 just a couple of months back. Is it, has the team ruled out the possibility of a, a false positive for him? I, he's in health and safety protocols. I mean, that's really all I got for you. If it, once, once we get a little farther along and we know more, you guys will be the, the first to know. No, okay. but that's, that's really all I got. We've already heard your name come up as a you know potential um, candidate for this job uh, next year. Is that have you made a determination in your mind whether you you want to throw your hat in the ring there? Do you do you want to be a candidate for the job long term? Um, I mean, if you know me, you know I'm more of an in the moment person. Like this is where I'm at. I, I'm not. I, I don't think like that. Ag has done a hell of a job, and he's been so productive with helping me try to be better. And that's really all I'm going to try to be. If, if they see more and they want more and that opportunity presents itself, that's what you have to face when the, when the opportunity comes and, and you deal with it. But um, I like to stay in the moment. And, and I don't say that just like tongue in cheek. That's just kind of how I try to live. Yeah. Doug, you uh, in general are Sammy. extremely, what's up, sir? Good to see you. You're an extremely positive guy, right? And I'm just wondering uh, whether it's in the assistant role or tonight in the head role, how are you handling the, the morale component of this squad? Because you have the on-court stress yeah. of struggles. You have the COVID factor. Uh, you know, you got a lot of stuff going on. You got the trade deadline coming up, yeah. which always adds anxiety. Yeah, yeah. I feel like in that locker room, it's probably a little tight right now. How are you handling that part? Uh, you're always well documented, Sammy. I appreciate that. Um, I would assume that at points in the game, 
uh, we're going to laugh together. It's not always going to be tense in the huddle. It might be tense, but that those are moments where you come in and you say something really odd so everybody looks at you and then we ground ourselves. Um, this is the life that we chose, man. Uh, so if you look at it as pressure, it's pressure. If you look at it like I told G-Man, it's an opportunity. And I'm hoping that everybody in that locker room wants the opportunity to be great because that's that's what we're here for. At least that's why I'm here. And I expect nothing less. I know AG expects nothing less. Management, ownership, fans. So for me, like I said, it, it's not, not my opportunity. It's their opportunity. And we get it just shortly. Coach, what's the uh, concern – Overall, in the in in the locker room with the health and uh, you know, especially with the COVID, it's a good question. I haven't had a chance to speak to them. Like you know, concern. I think like, yeah, is it a concern? Yeah, we're seeing it pop up. But we have to. One thing I will say, like our training staff, like they have been spectacular. I've when I enter this building, I feel as safe as I, I am anywhere, and that is because like Joe and Tina and Jazz and everybody that are in there, they do a spectacular job with communicating to us and making us feel comfortable. So I would think that guys feel pretty comfortable, but I'm only speaking for myself because I haven't had an opportunity to speak to them about that particular topic. Hey, Doug, hope you're doing well. Um, obviously, tonight's an outlier, but since Gentry's taken over, we've seen a lot of injuries and some guys kind of in and out of the lineup. And I'm curious what your perspective is on, on the difficulties that causes for the guys that are playing on a nightly basis. Um, good question. It, it's it's tough because one thing about our league and just things in general is there's a rhythm to things. And when you're in and you're out and you're trying to find a rhythm, and to AG's credit, he's trying to find um, guys that are that are playing at a high level consistently. Then you add COVID and you add injuries into that. It, it makes it, I, I would agree, it makes it really, really difficult. But this, um, as I said to Sam, this is, this is what we've chosen to do. There are no excuses in this job. You find a way to make it happen. Um, that's where you lean on your brother. That's where you, you have their back. And you, if you only got five, you give your five as hard as you possibly can, raise your hand and come out and somebody else goes in. That's, that's, the, that's the way that we go about that. So is it, are injuries hard or is COVID difficult? Yes, it is. But this is where we're at and we're, we're more about overcoming and not excuses. Thank you, Thank you guys.